Good morning, my name's Amber. I'm a flower farmer florist from Blooms on the Hill in Budgeree and this morning I have to harvest some foliage and flowers because I need to do a vase arrangement. I have a um, order for some flowers for a wake which is today at two o'clock and um, I've got to deliver that by about 12. Um, I've also got a market tomorrow amazingly Dahlias are still blooming. I've still got lots of zinnias. Um, just harvested some straw flowers yesterday. I've still got, uh, yeah, what else? Bits and pieces. Um, so doing Yarrigan Market tomorrow. So I'll have to, have to do a big harvest this afternoon. But I'm going to go and get some foliage now. And I'm going to get some dahlias. The spec for this uh, job was for it to be nice and cheerful. Um because it's more of a celebration um, rather than something somber. So let's go cutting. I'm in my, what was a dairy, and can you hear the ticking? That's the electric fence. First thing is to turn that off so I don't get <laughs> zapped while I go through the fence um, to pick some foliage. We don't want that. It's a little bit drizzly today. It's meant to be in the... 20s though in terms of temperature for about a week which is really good and I mean almost sort of 24 kind of whoop temperatures which is good I'm heading to a um, gum tree that we've got that's got really nice foliage and it's in this area where a dam is we've got to go through a that's why I just climbed through a fence um, so the moment I didn't really want to go too much for gum today because it's a um, bit of a sad blue. It's very pretty blue, green. I wanted something a bit brighter. But foliage is looking a little bit sad now because it's autumn. And I've got some things like my apple tree, which I'd like to use. I'll go and have a look at that. But a lot of the leaves are getting really tired because they're just about to come off. Anyway, I'll show you this tree. There's my little gum tree. I don't try and hack off it too much, but it's got really nice foliage. I don't need an awful lot just for one vase. It's very tall. Well, not that tall, but <laughs> yeah, there's stuff at the top I can't get. Anyway, I'll cut some of this. That's probably enough. And then I can get some other bits and pieces from the garden. Now I've also picked some, um, uh, this is from my, I went past my veggie garden and this is my carrots have gone to seed. Um, and why not? <laughs> why not pick the flowers? The um, carrots are from the same family as your, your Queen Anne's lace or your, I think we have false Queen Anne's lace that grows like as a weed. Um, I also grew deliberately chocolate lace for this season. And for next season, I've already sown some Ami Magus and Ami Visnaga, which is the same same family again. So I thought, well, you know, might as well use that. It's really pretty. I'm here in front of my apple tree. It's my ducks. Um, which is slowly getting munched at by the lorikeets. And now the wasps are finding the half-chewed on apples. We've picked heaps of apples off this tree. It, it gives us fruit every second year. Um, we picked crates and crates of apples. I still need to probably get some more off. But I'm just going to see if any of this foliage is okay. And there's some here that's sort of looking all right, that bit there. Anyway, we'll have a bit of a go. Okay, done the foliage, didn't go overboard. So, dahlias, as you can see, they're still blooming, amazingly. Um, so, I think I'm going to go, well, she did say pinks. Um, was one of the colors actually was the only color she mentioned but she wants it bright so I'm thinking to go for these ones uh, these are cerise swell they um, of course they're very open they don't last very long so I don't actually pick these and take these to market because they're yeah once once a flower is pollinated um, it's done its job so then it will fall apart <laughs> so if you pick them they don't last terribly long but it's okay for today because they've only got to last 
today. So it's just after 10 o'clock now. I'm going to deliver this about 12. The wake's at 2. So they're going to hang on certainly for that long. So I'm going to go for those. Um, oh, there's quite a few of these. Um, well, these are florally morello. I think I'll just go for a bit of pink that blends, but I want to make it really bright and cheerful and happy. So I'm going to put a bit of yellow in there. Uh, what else have I got? Maybe a bit of orange. Oh, there's quite a few dark ones going on there too. I don't want to get too dark and foreboding. Um, I want it to blend. Uh, but yeah, I just really want it to be nice and bright. So I've got zinnias too that I harvested last night just to ease the pressure a bit. Otherwise, I've got to harvest like crazy. It usually takes me about six hours when I'm harvesting from market. So I did a bit last night. <laughs> it's just too much in one go. Anyway, I'll get stuck in and show you what I picked. And then I've also got some stuff in my other garden. I harvested, as I said, straw flowers last night. So I might put some of those in. And there's a little bit of blue with my bog sage going on over there too, which might be nice with my tall spiky bits. So. Let's just mix it up today and make it really cheerful. There's quite a lot of new growth going on too with these dahlias. A lot of these plants have just got lovely lush new foliage. It's a very weird season. Late starting season, but it's still going, which is really good. Now I've got, yep, I've got those Morello ones and these are swell. And I think I'm going to go for some of these as well. I love these. Dar Darbro Marianne they are. They're really cheerful. All right, my theory with the colour with this is there is some of that dark burgundy there, so we can repeat it there. The yellow face, so having all that lovely centre showing, that means we can bring some yellow in too. It'll all tie in nicely in terms of colour matching. Okay, ignoring the weeds that are surrounding everywhere they'll get cleared out when all the dahlias are gone um what i've got is in terms of dahlias the cerise swell i have that um florally morello i also picked some of that darbro marianne this one here is first prize blends in nicely this one is cashmere uh that one i think is florally Harmony, or yeah, I think so. And then there's florally kindness into there too, which is that one bringing in that yellow. Um, that one, I think that might have been Mandalay. That one, this one, I'm pretty sure was Corabel Heather. Um, this one here is actually a seedling, it's a nice yellow one. And this one here, this fun little one, is also a seedling, and I love the shape of the petals. It's no good for taking to market. So I've picked quite a lot of that um, as a little secondary sort of a bloom. Um, you know, perfect for this sort of a thing where it's just got to sit there and, and not be dragged around to a market. So I can put that one in. This one here is a bit blown open too, but that's okay. Um, it's only got to last well, just today. So I'm quite happy with that combination of dahlias. Now I'm going to go and get some Cosmos. I don't think any of this is going to do. This is all, as you can see, blowing right over, going to seed. Too much to look after. I'm not going to have anywhere near as much as this Cosmos <laughs> next year. Not so much. Um, probably do a yellow and the fluffy pinks. But I do have some down in my paddock that's doing a lot better. So we'll go and get some of that. You can see, paddock is still blooming. I was out here deadheading the other day. So it's getting towards the end. And the Cosmos is that little purple patch just down here, purpley pinky patch. So we'll get some of that. Okay, we've picked everything. So I've got my vase, got some water in it. I have a sticker, one of my Blooms on the Hill stickers on the bottom. Um, the lady is going to take this back to the post office for me to pick up, but like if it gets lost, it's no big deal. Um, so what do I have? I've got my uh, feature dahlias. I have um, my foliage. So I've got my gum, whichever one that is, I have no idea. A bit of apple. Also my little bit of fluffy carrot. <laughs> um, I also have my cosmos, 
which is a nice wiggle. I also picked, oh, whether or not they're going to go in, I don't know. But here's some um, Japanese anemones or Japanese windflower. I haven't actually picked any of this this season, but anyway. I've also grabbed some box age. So I don't know whether I'm going to put this in as a spike, um, whether or not the blue goes, but I thought it might be just a nice pop of colour and really like that sort of contrast add to the cheerfulness of the whole thing. So there's that. And I also have um, all of these beautiful uh, zinnias. There's lots of these. And there's another bucket of down there with a bit more sort of pinky purpley shades. And I have all these gorgeous straw flowers. So I've certainly got plenty to work with. So creating a bit of space. So I will start with foliage and then the snips. Um, and I'm going to start with the gum. And I'm going to make a big mess on the floor. I'll explain that later. So I'm just going to like strip the lower two thirds of things and give everything a bit of a cut on the angle. I start, yeah, with foliage and that becomes like a structure. So it's sort of a little bit close. <laughs> um, it just creates the base for everything. So, and then your flowers can sit nicely in that and be supported. So you don't need anything in the bottom of your vase if you use your foliage. And I'll clean it up a bit as I go. If there's anything that looks a bit unusual, flowers have a mind of their own. Okay, so sometimes you'll put something in a vase and it'll twist a certain way depending on, you know, which way the foliage has grown and which way the stem bends. So you've, you've sort of just got to work with it instead of trying to fight against it because um, otherwise you just get frustrated. And so let, let the flowers and the foliage... Um, oh, look, peek-a-boo! Um, <laughs> um, decide for you how the thing's going to go. So this is going to be going on a table like peering through a jungle, going on a table where people can sign the guest book. So I don't know whether the table's going to be up against a wall. Um, if I knew that, then I would do it so that the, the um, bars arrangement would be more interesting from just one side. But this way I'm going to do it so you can view it from all directions. So, yeah, that is the plan. I probably won't use all the foliage I picked because it will end up being too foliagey, is that really a word? I uh, might trim that one a bit. Anyway, I'll do this. It's a bit boring watching you do it, and I'll get back to you. Hang on, tip. Okay, I just have to move you over a bit because this is getting out of control. Um, so just arrange that foliage in there as a base. This size is actually not very big. It's about as tall as my head, um, which means it does actually create, even though it looks, it's not massive, it's creating quite a large arrangement. So you've probably got vase being like one third of the whole piece and two thirds with your, your foliage and your flowers. And that's about balanced. Okay, so I'm going to add, I think I might actually add my little um, lacy carrots in there. And these three are actually together, so I might do that first. I'm going to have to adjust the height first. Make a serious cut off the bottom. And see how they go nestled in there. Yeah, they work. You can't really see that. I'll have to pick you up. Hang on. I've got those there. All right. Let's just keep plugging and I'll get back to you again. Hang on. Yeah. I quite like what's going on with that. And I'm going to start putting the dahlias in now. Okay. Um, yeah. And there's not much room here to sort of show you what I'm doing. But I don't have a very big space. <laughs> but I'll pick a, uh, yeah, we'll find a feature one and we'll go with that. And I'm thinking... I might use those cerise swirls to start with. Okay, so these ones. But I'm going to have to 
I'll put them further back. But um, oh, I can't really go that way. There's buckets of flowers. Hang on. <laughs> right now, I don't want the straw flowers just yet. I want the babies. So I started with. Oh, I ignore all the rubbish everywhere. I've, oh, you seem miles away. Um, I started with these cerise oh, swell. You don't need to see me anyway. Um, cerise swell one, and I'll keep using those uh, to fill it out. So really, I'm just going as balanced as I can. Um, I have mostly those, or more of those, anyway, um, and I will use... I think those is a bit of a feature because they're, I think they are the epitome of cheerful, these ones with their little happy open faces um, and they're pink. And, you know, it's a shame that I can't really take them to market. They're hard to, I couldn't use them in, say, a, a bride's bouquet or anything because they just wouldn't last. Actually, that even looks nice like that just on its own. But no, nope, I'm going to keep adding and making it very beautiful. Alright, I think that might be the last one of those. So we're going to go with, whoops, I'm going to go with the Floral Amarello. I love this one. It's just so, so pretty. Anything that's got a bit of two tone with a little splash in it. A uh, little leaf going on in there, I might get rid of that. But leave some of it because it is nice and let's just we're going with balanced yeah so it looks good from all sides right okay so i'm just going to keep placing bits as i go working around and turning the bars so it looks good from all directions and then i'll show you right now i've got those Darbro marianne ones in um well, and we're going to work with some yellow now um, to start to balance it out, introduce that colour. Yeah. Just start popping it in. I really like yellow flowers now. I never used to, and then you've just got to find a light yellow. I don't like neon yellow, it's a bit nasty. But, um, I did an arrangement, uh, it must be on my Instagram, I think, um, and it was just all yellow. Everything was yellow, all different flowers, all different dahlias, cosmos, um, and it seems it looked good. <laughs> I say so myself. It, it just, but, oh, yellow it's a color that looks really good and um, i'm going to put those little daisy like ones in at the end uh, and just finish off with the dahlias and then i'll see about the cosmos um i don't think i'll be able to fit any zinnias in here uh still looking for a bit where this should go and I'll just then I'll see if that bog sage with that touch of blue works or not. It might not, so that's okay. Keep going. So not to these little ones. I put every, all the other downings in, and I put the first one in. Yeah, and they sort of stand out proud a little bit, um, because a little bit wiggly, and they sort of give it um, a little bit of movement. So just getting them in where they'll. Little bit balance. Um, just where it looks like it needs it, and I don't think it's actually going to fit in there. <laughs> That's my um, I do, you can see a little. Can you see any of it uh, here? Um, and up here. Up here. So just putting a little bit in. I won't obviously be using all of this. Once again, putting it in where it sort of fits and it pops up above some of those dahlias, which I think for some need to be sort of shifted. I think that's like a huge amount of flowers. 
looks really pretty. And I think it's definitely a big, bright, cheerful. Yeah. I don't think we need too much cold moss though. Maybe we drop it a little bit. That might be something to do. Pull that little bit out, give it a bit of a trim. It sits down a bit. Yeah, okay, I think we're getting there. <laughs> okay, so I'm done with the cosmos and it's certainly very pink and burgundy and, and yellow. Trying the blue in with that. Can you see the blue? In with oh, what happened there? It doesn't help when I cover up the uh, thing. <laughs> the blue flower. Oh, there it is. <laughs> In with that, I really like that. I like that little pop of blue. So I'm gonna add some blue. So I'll pop you back and I'll do that. A little hard to see, but I'm I'm really liking the um the blue in there because it just makes it fun. It just you know that little out of colour. Um and it does seem a little sort of you know not in other things but I do like it because it does just yeah it does make it fun if you sort of want a happy arrangement for a way in remembrance of someone special and rather than making it you know somber occasion which it is of course respectfully but um you know we're going to celebrate that someone had a really great life and was well loved and um, I like that. Trimming things a little bit. Now I'm just going to add a little bit of extra water to the vase for my little pink. Um, <laughs> watering can. This is sort of the easiest way to do it. Not too much because it's got to get down to the bowls club. Um, without sloshing water all through my car, I might in, use a small child to hold it in the car. <laughs> um, I've just done, as a flower farmer, like this is my business, so recording everything that I do uh, in terms of getting some photos of it um, and, you know, doing all that sort of thing for social media as well. So, um, yeah, getting some shots and some little snippets. Uh, all was left now was to deliver it, which it's due down there fairly soon. So everything takes so long. <laughs> anyway, thanks for coming with me on this little vase arranging journey and I will um, catch up with you soon.